When you first jump into the staking dashboard, it might be a little overwhelming. You've got validators, you've got metrics, but what do they all mean for staking returns as a delegator? After all, who you choose to delegate to has a significant bearing on your return. So let's break it down. There are two key pieces of information you need to hand when selecting a validator. One, expected return, and two, reputation or track record. The expected return is a snapshot of a validator's forward-looking expected earnings. In EPOS, a validator's expected earning rate primarily depends on their stake's relative position compared to the median stake in order to maintain decentralization. For example, if a validator's stake is 100 million but the median stake is only 50 million, then this validator will earn as if he has 57.5 million, and the expected return rate will be low. When a validator's stake becomes too far away from the median, 1.15 of the median is the cutoff, their percentage earning rate goes down. Let's say there's another validator with 10 million at stake. This validator's effective stake will be 42.5 million, or 0.85 of the median. This validator is also far away from the median, but on the lower side of it. And that means that this validator will earn as if he had 42.5 million, whereas he's only staking 10 million. So this validator's expected return rate will be very high. But note that validator's expected return rate goes down as their stake grows too much. And you should also keep this in mind if the tokens you intend to delegate will significantly change the total stake of a validator. If you delegate too much, the rewards will go down. So, expected return rate is a killer metric because it already factors in all of the median stuff above. And if you don't have time to look at anything else, just look at the expected return. Reputation is the track record of a validator that indicates their behavior over time. And it's generally better to select a validator with the following attributes. One, they've been a validator for a decent period of time, which will indicate their commitment to being a genuine participant in the network. Two, consistent returns and uptime, which shouldn't be too volatile and will demonstrate that they're not trying to game the system. Three, lower commission fees, which should indicate the validator isn't greedy. And four, they've attracted more delegators, and a larger group indicates confidence in the validator. Handily, you can see all of these insights on the validator profile page. And a top tip, always make sure to diversify your stake across multiple credible validators to minimize slashing risk, same as you would for any investment. So now that you've created your stake portfolio, what should you do? Firstly, monitor the performance of your validators on the portfolio page. If you observe some of their metrics went down or the validator became unelected, you can choose to undelegate from this validator and delegate to a new one. But don't forget, the undelegation period is seven epochs before the funds become available. And do make sure to check for changes in commission fees. Secondly, check your reward balance, claim your rewards, and re-delegate to validators of your choice. So that should give you a good starting point for maximizing your delegator rewards, but do check out the other videos in the series to learn more about the specifics of the EPOS consensus mechanism. And remember, delegate, collect, repeat.